Namaste. I'm here with Ruoshan Fernandez. He's one of our partners in No Wait and uh, helping us with the AI development. So, welcome, Buttle. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to talk with you today about the role of matrix learnable in helping people cope with the tremendous changes in the technology. Uh, the industrial psychologist Carol Dweck was famous back in the 1980s for saying there are two kinds of workers, two kinds of people, the static mindset and the growth mindset. Right. So which one are you? <laughs> oh, yes, the second one. Okay. That's the person, the type of person who can survive extreme changes in technology and society. But the static mindset people are in a lot of trouble. Recently, we've seen this chat GPT. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about That's chat GPT. And even we are planning to add it to the site, to the Noli online course site. But uh, why do you think it's such a big deal? Why are so many people excited by it? I mean, with that uh, technology advances, they are uh, setting up trends. I mean, though, with the I mean, kind of an evolution thing. So when we uh, when the corporate that the, the world is run grand corporations, so uh, they are trying to acquire our or, or the I mean the dominance over the world from different continents into different countries. So that's how these products and that the corporations play in the world right now. It's a political I for the best political play actually. So uh, time to time there are different products that uh, I mean setting up the benchmark to the next level. So it's chat DPD is a kind of thing right now. It's like if you're gonna have to know this yes. to be a successful profession. Yes, that's the setting of this uh, market right now. So we don't know that DPD is saying a favorable support, but people are trying to help. I mean, go with that. Well, anytime you see Microsoft invest $10 billion yes. in a company, you know it's gotta be important. Yeah. And it's going to play a major factor. Yes. So we're integrating this uh, chat GBT AI Bullet. in Noli. Great. In our course site. Yes. And uh, you've been in on that from the beginning. Well, just last night I was playing around with our AI provider. Well, look. And one of our other partners in New York happened to be on chat GPT at the same time, asking questions, and matrix learning came up. Now, how did chat GPT learn about matrix learning? <laughs> See, because we've kept this very kind of private. Yes. So I figured out, oh, it must be through our AI provider. They must be using chat GPT in the background. Oh, yes and doing some fancy prompt engineering to get the right kind of answers. And I, so I contacted them about it, and they confirmed. Seriously? So they have shared that information with it? Yes, they share it with me. But this why do they have the adaptiveness? Is that, what was the? Well, because I, I, uh, I told him my guess. I said, I bet what you're doing behind the scenes is you're using GPT-3 API with this is some prompt engineering, mm -hmm. and then when you get the, the answer back, the response, you do a little text search in the original documents so you, you identify where the material comes from in the source. Mm -hmm. See, that's what ChatGPT... So the engine is ChatGPT? Yes. Okay. Confirmed it. Which is fine, you know. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, let them do their job. Because when developing a uh, thing from scratch, it takes a time, really. So when they, uh, it seems they do three to four years to develop this level. They've already done the, the, the development cost. Yeah. And then if we could just play a monthly subscription fee, mm -hmm. we can have the thing on our site. Yeah. And just tell it that, okay, whenever you get a question, you look at these documents, so, depending on which course yeah. they're on. So we're in the process of integrating 
this uh, chat functionality in our website, we're going to be the first spiritual course site to have an intelligent chat bot. That's a real cool thing, right? <laughs> That's not that bad. A spiritual uh, platform with think rating AI. Yeah. So that sounds great. And it's great that we're, we're going to be the first. Yes. I mean, unless somebody blindsides us. <laughs> uh, it's really important to be first. Yes. Like back in 2005, we were the first spiritual teacher to uh, get on YouTube. YouTube had just come out. It was a brand new thing. We saw the potential. And we started videoing everything, putting it on the yeah. And that led to, oh, we were getting like a thousand views a day on YouTube. Back to, um, what was it, uh, 2010, 2011? Yeah, we had really grown our channel. You know? Then our channel now is doing pretty good too. But we're on a whole different platform now. We're not on the platform anymore of a faith-based religion. We're on the platform of a consciousness-based a kind of yogic point of view on everything. And we're putting this into the courses. So even though it may not be obvious, the assumptions in the background are that we're conscious beings, we have these four states of consciousness, and we use them all the time in different ways. And the courses then show you how to use your consciousness in an optimum way for whatever you're trying to do. That's matrix learning, really, in a nutshell. How do we apply consciousness? And how do we master consciousness in any given context? Yeah. So why do you believe that uh, that's the important thing that we need to focus? I mean, there are many regions, there are 4,000 regions in the world. And there are many belief systems. I mean, there with many, I mean, uh, the uh, infrastructure development along with that religious things, and their their belief system is different. So why do you believe that the conscious, conscious based learning or the conscious based understanding is the most important thing to solve it? Which, well, it's simple. Consciousness is senior to everything else. Simple. Everything else comes and goes, it's impermanent. Even the lower states of consciousness, like waking and dreaming and deep sleep, they come and go. Mm -hmm. what? But awareness, in other words, the root of all consciousness, is active 24-7, unconditionally. Right? And the other states of consciousness, like waking, dreaming, sleeping, cover that in different ways. Like last night I dreamed <laughs> I was on a big ladder and I was building like a structure, right? Which other people were going to use to fill in and make a house. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm doing with no yeah. I'm building the theoretical structure, the uh, ontological view, viewpoint. Yeah. And then filling in all the material in the courses on specific subject titers. So you brought up belief systems. So not only religion, also different forms of science are belief systems. Uh, they're based on different theories that people accept as assumptions. Yep. You know, like the difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics is simply a shift in point of view. Yes. A belief system. So in the same way, even though we may change our beliefs from one system to another, or we may move our concentration from one point of view to another, consciousness always remains the same. But if we master consciousness, we can master anything. That's the rationale behind making consciousness the, the senior element in any course, well, in any subject. But uh, 
we are living in a time right now when not only is the change in, in technology accelerating, the rate of change is also accelerating. And this is called uh, technically a double exponential curve. So we are in, in that period. Yeah, we're in the hockey stick part of the curve where it goes way up uh, very quickly, almost to the vertical. So how are we going to deal with that? Does it, you know, if, if we're in a static mindset, how can we deal with things that are changing under our feet? from day to day, from moment to moment, practically. I mean, the field of AI is expanding and accelerating so fast right now, even the experts can't keep up. Yeah. You know, uh, Google and Facebook and all those guys were completely surprised when they'd open AI when they came out with this new chatbot. I saw that they, they lost a hundred million dollars. <laughs> hundred billion? Yeah. Yeah. In the stock, there's capitalization, market capitalization, overnight. All of that. Because of a single mistake on a presentation or something that everybody knows it's so important, it's going to change history. <laughs> so, yeah, um, this stuff is important. Yeah. And you're going to have to learn AI to keep up, or you're going to wind up washing dishes. I'm serious. I mean, he literally could wind up in a low-paid restaurant job doing grunt work, you know, uh, because people who have a fixed mindset are going to have the rug pulled out from money least then, or middle management especially. But, you know, there's this philosophy that you hire somebody to be a middle manager of some department, and that's it. They stay there. That's their role permanently in a corporation. But now the corporation itself is changing so rapidly that a lot of these positions are going to go away. Yeah. So then what do you do? If you wait until you're fired, it's too late. That's why we rolled out Matrix Learning as our first major offering. It's a big course. I think it's going to take like six months eight months to go through it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how many of that free need to elevate for me? I think actually an hour a day, an hour to two hours a day. Every day? Yeah, every day. Okay. It has to be an everyday thing, like a, a habit, like exercise or meditation. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is literally rewiring your brain. Mm -hmm. We have look at things in the different way. And when you do that, repetition counts. There's a memorization technique called space repetition. It's a very powerful technique. Uh, we don't use that because we're not emphasizing memorization. We're memorizing analysis. <laughs> if you uh, can analyze these and make that part of your background knowledge, yeah. then you don't have to think about it when things come up. How do I deal with this? Or what, what is this situation? Or uh, how do I respond best in a moment to this situation? You don't have to like think about it or go back and consult your notes uh -huh. or some reference books or go ask somebody for advice. You just know. And the secret to that is having the proper background knowledge. It's called, in learning technology, it's called a terministic screen. But really the proper name for it is ontology. Ontology. Ontology is very well known now among programmers because to make a responsive website, and especially a search website, you have to have a tree-structured knowledge base of all of the possible subjects and how they relate to one another. This is an ontology. Uh, it has three elements called a triple. The subject, the object, and the relation. So a tree-structured diagram, or a graph, as it's called, of the relationships between different entities is called an ontology. 
So if you have this ontology embedded in your mind by repetition, by constant, constantly working on it every day, then when things come up and you have to respond, there's no hesitation, no uncertainty, no doubt. Because you are that thing. You have actually changed your being. You know, like an athlete or a musician. When stuff happens, boom, they can respond. They don't think about it. Or a jet pilot. It is no time. So you have to just respond instantly. And the one with the best ontology wins. Oh, a question has come up, like, where do we go next after matrix learning? Yes. What do we do next? And let's see, uh, after, after having the matrix learning, what, what kind of a person that I can uh... Well, that's up to you. <laughs> what do you want to apply it to? You could apply it to anything. Becoming a doctor, becoming a musician, a pilot, whatever. Well, we emphasize spiritual culture, meditation, and enlightenment because that really gives the greatest benefits. If you have these skills, you can do with anything. You know, meditation plus learning, deep learning skills, you know, that's that makes you the most capable of adapting to a changing environment. And that's the challenge today. Rate of change is going astronomical. So but we feel that's the priority. Number one, the learning technique. And number two, the consciousness-oriented view of life. Would we tell me this at a growth if? That will be, yeah, after matrix learning. Because if we give it before matrix learning, we won't be able to edit. <laughs> Our theory is, we, we're going to find out if this is this working, actually. If someone does matrix learning and applies that to the information on consciousness, given in the Mandukya Upanishad and others, that because they will have understood the terminology properly, they are in a position to immediately realize and get the full benefit of, of Brahman realization, which is normally something that takes years, if not lifetimes. Well, okay. Yep. But we think if you understand this simple, direct explanation in the scriptures, if you actually get it, you'll have immediate awakening, immediate enlightenment. Because when you get that enlightenment, you realize, oh, it was this way all along. I was just, I didn't recognize it. I didn't see it. And I didn't get the meaning of it. But really, it doesn't change anything except your point of view. So that if people can't get that, there's other things they can do to prepare for it and then come back to it and do it better. So uh, in your process, is there any Western teachings? I mean, there are many personal development programs combines neuroscience and uh, psychology, personal development theories to that program great and they have offered a program. So in your program is, it, is there any Western teachings? No. No. Because as soon as you get into those viewpoints, it brings in a whole bunch of baggage, you know. Uh, for example, neuroscience views consciousness as an epiphenomenon of brain function. Like, come on. The brain comes from consciousness. Say, we teach Buddha's theory of dependent origination, but teach us some that was out there. We teach that. That is the means of becoming. And that begins from consciousness. From consciousness, the whole body, mind, personality, even the world that one is born into, develops from that seed, consciousness and name and form. In other words, ontology. Ontology. Yes. So, so now, yes, now, if you know, 
uh, Chaitanya and Nama Rupa. Basically, you know everything. You can become anything. You can do anything. Go anywhere you want to go. Uh, and then talking about like different worlds, different planetary systems. But the sky is not the limit. The that you can go any place. Right. So this is an, an immense power which is granted by complete self-realization. That's why we've, we always prioritize self-realization because you get the most benefit from it. Now, as it turns out, you also get a lot of side benefits pretty much automatically. And the ability to learn very quickly and deeply is one of them. So we encourage everybody. In fact, we make it mandatory. They have to do matrix learning before they can do any of the other courses on the site. So, so uh, in, in most of our cases, uh, we have heard and we have continuous to work with Western teaching. So that, that has executed so far. But the Eastern side is more powerful to and more powerful teachers, but yeah, not, not a lad or yeah, not, uh, I mean, uh, have a, a look at that system. So yes, it's so, not taught or stunned level. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a society that uh, when in the position that we in the Western, more most of the time, Western teachings, how we can adapt that is we, we are uh, learning that language. We're still teaching language and the Eastern science is learning a stick through. So do you think that we can adapt quickly to that? Uh, it depends on how we view it. If we view Western science, let's say, neurology or something like that, astrophysics, as the way it is, right, then it's going to be very hard for us to adapt because that's a static viewpoint. But if we view it as simply a way of looking at things, a language, a metaphor, Therefore. a view, as the Buddha called it, then we can easily adapt or change it, see, or replace it with another view. Because a view is not a permanent thing. A view is something we have control over. So we view all these things as views, <laughs> not as hard-coded truth, right? It's only a way of looking at, like quantum mechanics is so beautiful because it introduces the idea of the observer interacting with a system, right? And we do that uh, through matrix learning. We give you the power to remove ontological constraints. An ontological constraint means I can't be that. I can't think, no do, act, or become that thing, whenever it is, right? A ballet dancer or a race car driver. I can't do that. See, this is what happens to most children. If you ask a small child, what do you want to be when you grow up? He doesn't say, I want to be an accountant. <laughs> he says, I want to be a superhero. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be something great. Why do they give up those ideas? Why do they sell for something less? Because the schooling is giving them ontological constraints. You can't do that, Johnny. You're not smart enough. You're not good enough. See? And it, it gives them this ontological constraint. I can't be that. I can't become that. So the first thing we do in matrix learning is teach you how to overcome ontological constraints. And, you, you know, get back to the blue sky mindset of, I can do anything. I can become anything. That's the power of matrix learning. So do you think that, that uh, with the genetic transition of our, I mean, we have a genetic memory and as well as karmic memory, I wonder with that. So or with the genetic constraint, I... Do we admit that? Yes, but again, consciousness is senior to that. So if we master consciousness, if we have the right point of view of consciousness, then we can overcome any kind of limitation on our being and become really whatever we want to be.